You have arrived at the E.T. Newsroom with your host, Joanna Summerscales. Welcome. Be prepared. Be prepared. So we're here in an area called Camber Sands. This is a very flat area that um, eventually goes into the rye marshes and what have you. It's a beautiful mid-June day after a, a night of incredible thunderstorms and I'm doing a little field trip with Peter Vincent who's a biolocation guy, remote viewer and he's been telling me about an area in this neck of the woods where he has map doused uh, bases. Exchanges going on, craft coming and going. But this is also, interestingly, uh, bordering the military uh, site, I guess. So you've got, there's a, a, a big military complex along this neck of the woods. Um, over, way over in the distance, you might be able to see that's Dungeness. So I'll give you a kind of idea of where we are. And so we're just going to, oh, do you know what? I forgot to bring my, <laughs> my rods. Anyway, I shall borrow Peter's, but we're just going to have a look. He's going to see if we can detect, or he can detect, dowsing wise, these bases because so far he's um, done it via the map and he has also noted that certain activities go on at certain times and it involves transport to Mars. See how it's along there? Yeah, indeed, I see what you mean. Peter was telling me that the promenade area, such as it is, is blocked off by the military. There you go, you can see that. Coast Guard, military, whatever. And there's the lovely sea. I thought this was a, a very interesting exercise because um, map dowsing is quite a challenge. Uh, I, I haven't been that successful at it myself, but then again, I haven't really put in the work like Peter has over the years. I, I've just heard live, well, I've heard firing. That's what I was just hearing. I don't know if you've caught that. So anyway, I thought this was would make a, a little interesting vignette and probably will go into part of a yeah, documentary I want to put together about what these biolocation and folks are doing. Here we go. That gives you a good idea. Ministry of Defence Range. Oh, I think so. Keep out, keep out, keep out. There's the firing range. Timetable. There you go for June 19th. Okay, so let's see what Peter's got. Just put up the rod for anomaly. 9364512010. Look, and it points right to the anomaly. So, okay, 
That's so that, that means that there's something under there, which is um, what this is here. We Right, let's have a look at this. Let's... Right. We are here, just here, right? Okay. And the anomaly is out to sea here. So by holding my rod in this angle, it's picking up this whole anomaly here in the sea. And what do you Well, think something that happens is? here at 2 o'clock every day and then goes every at day. 3 o'clock. Well, I think it's 2 because there's a regular pattern. Also, 9 something in the morning, between 9 and 10 in the morning, something happens in, uh, in a dimensional form. It's a sort of a stargate. It's a stargate. So those are the huts we're looking at there, which are over there. And this is all the military base you can't sort of go into. And they've dug a new one out here because this wasn't here last time. That wasn't there last time. Okay. And there's a load of soil and stuff and um, miniature railway spoil over there. And it all links up underground, you see. Okay. And I think that it links up to an underground railway connection that might go to Folkestone. I'm not sure about that. But uh, it has to come out by train somewhere underneath. And there is marshalling yards at Folkestone that would link out to the whole national rail network, you know. We're going to get quite a lot of interference on the sound because we've got the wind here, but um, when you've uh, put those uh, back, those papers, perhaps you can uh, just give uh, a little explanation of your research so far, yeah. which um, leads you to, well, leads us today to this place. Well, when I was looking at um, UFOs and things. I uh, wanted to know if there were any anomalies um, in our close by to where I was doing my research, and this showed up out in the, um, the sea there. Um, and um, what, what drew I, your attention to it? What was the well? It, hook? I went uh, recall remote viewing over maps. Oh, I picked okay. it up against the codes that would pick up uh, UFO craft. Right. So I thought, well, how can a UFO craft be in the sea? Now, of course, MUFON, in their latest uh, disclosure, say that there is a lot of um, um, undersea activity with some um, yeah. uh, submersible, submersible, uh, yeah, submersible uh, yeah. UFOs. But the thing is that um, I found that there were certain chemical uh, minerals also exchanging, something we call xyluminium and oxysorus. We don't know what they are, but they're, they are unique into all these sort of situations. Um, and that uranium was going down there and that uranium was sort of disappearing and these other materials were coming in. So I realised that some transference was going on, so I thought, how do I work this out? So through colour, I worked out that there was a portal underneath in this anomaly and uh, a sort of a, um, a section where something would come off a UFO into a section, like a, an airlock, so we called it a stargate, and then that other bit would then open into our dimension, basically. So the goods would then exchange through dimensions into their dimension. And uh, we also had something that responded to the life form of 42, uh, for which we got masses of burials all around the world relating to this, uh, along with human burials. So 42 used to be in this, like an office at the end of this tunnel, and I found some codes that would activate the actual wormhole. And I found so... by activating the wormhole, the life form would come out and walk down to the other end of the tunnel. See um, who it was and what it was that was yeah, causing, yes, it was causing uh, it because the that would only react if you were actually landing a UFO there. You see, it would create this. Uh, it was a whole string of colours. It's about a dozen colours nearly that would, uh, in the correct order, would create an anomaly activation and an anomaly. Right. So um, we're going to just say yeah, what yeah. forty-two is. Well, forty-two seems to be some. It, it, it's it's it's, um, it's a form that is humanoid and is buried like humans would be buried. But um, they're, they're around the Great Pyramid in Egypt. Um, they're in our uh, in Local. front of the Arrowhead locally, in front of the Arrowhead burial. In, which, which is Tunbridge Wells. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that uh, I found them on the um, east coast of America. Um, and I found them, well, basically everywhere. Um, Bellus Knapp, um, the arrowhead above ground burial at Bellus Knapp is pointing over to a field next door from which there appears to be an arrowhead burial of 42 burials okay. pointing to a single female 
So it's telling you about breeding. So there was some sort of interaction going on with breeding as well. Wow. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. so, so let's just go back yeah. to where we are Well, here, we're now so... here at this Coast Guard station, just further along from Cam Sands, uh, which is a, an official MOD firing range and testing range. But for some reason, it's registering an anomaly in the, in the sea yeah. off the coast there that's restricted to public um, access, as yeah. you can see here. Yeah. Um, now, if you go right down the other end, you've got Dungeness Power Station. Yeah. Uh, in the distance, you can see it. So you've got an enormous energy supply there. That's, um, that's true. And um, that's an interesting point because you need a lot of energy to supply an anomaly. <laughs> and this anomaly, you think, might be. Um... Well, whatever it is, uh, we'll be able to tell because we've got a code here that responds to um, uranium. So we would pick up. We would pick up uranium. These are the chemicals that they're exchanging it for. So we'll have these oxysaurus and xyluminium. And do we know what those? Well, they are there. I believe that these are industrially manufactured um, metals for bodies of craft, air, you know, um, to be able to fly spacecraft and high-speed craft, you know, sort of thing. So um, it's all to do with space technology, really. So what I've got to do is to try and uh, find the code for the um, energy circle, which we've got the anomaly, we've got the uranium, and the, in other words, the goods exchange. That's exchanged for those. Um, let's have a look. That's ley line. Who's up? There we are. So we've got codes for everything, we've got literally hundreds of codes, you know, and it's a question of just getting the right one out. There we are, that's it. Now that's energy circle code that will pick these spheres up and everything. We've also got a code for craft in general. You can see they're well, they're well used. These, these codes are, are um, acquired through the mind. The mine provides you with the codes, but in order to get them, you have to have access to the 42 codes code system. And, okay. Uh, that is why I think this is so important. In other words, that they have actually been teaching us, and uh, could well be the forms that were were um, thought to be in Egypt. You know, because they are buried around the Great Pyramid. Uh, let's have a look and see. So it's a species. It has to be done by rod, rod pointing because if you you can't do it holding rods across, so you've got to do it by rod pointing. So if there's uranium here, then um, there should be uh, some sort of. Uh, it's going to go right the way around here because it has to get in there. It has to come in to that tunnel underneath. So it has to be this end rather than the other end, you see what I mean? So, okay. yeah, so the uranium would have to be this end, and the oxysaurus and xylomina would have to be out there. So I'm going to use the other So let's just do um, the xyluminium here. The xyluminium, the wind's blowing the rod, but it's still wanting to go around to the same area where the anomaly is, right? Which is out there. About 200 yards, 300 yards out, maybe 400 yards out. Um, so it's right under the sea. And what is interesting, that I was informed by somebody who worked for the lifeboats down here, that um, in actual fact, uh, that they had more trouble with um, people getting into trouble uh, with their compasses getting out of true, you know. So that's, that's Oxysaurus there, so that's going out there. Um, but if I was to go here, it's scanning. It's still scanning. And it still wants to point in that direction, you see. Yeah. That's what I'm getting at. So allowing for the wind blowing this way, it's still wanting to come around. So now, what we need to do is that if, I, if it's correct that this is still going on, at 2 o'clock, which is in 5 minutes time, the 
there should be an activation in the chamber out there, in the anomaly chamber. Oh, well, we'll have to stay for that. Yeah. So what, where, is where is Elizabeth? Uh, Elizabeth has gone for a lovely long walk. She's just, the, uh, yeah, she's yeah. just over there in the... Uh, yeah. To find out is uh, whether this this code gets activated. But also, where are these exchanges well, of minerals going um, to? There was a book published by Mary, well, written um, by Mary Bennett, called Two Thirds. And, and David um, Percy, I used to have. Yes, yes. Yeah. Now I've seen um, here uh -oh. all of a sudden it sort of just um, sort of uh, disappeared. Strange things do happen. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I know, we talked about having our respective rods pinched. Here, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. I don't think yet. anybody pinched yours. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but um, the thing is, that when looking over the maps of Mars, I found that the 42 was responding on Mars as well, as active in underground uh, tunnels and uh, chambers. Okay. So, I, for some reason, I noticed that the activation was taking place at a near time as we were getting here. Oh, so, okay. for instance, if something appeared here at 2 o'clock and disappeared at 3 o'clock, 1500 hours, it would appear on Mars at 1505, at 1515. 1515, about 15 minutes later. Oh, okay. So, yeah. it seemed to be 15 minute activation between here and that's getting there, so, arriving. Yeah, so basically, I found that there was a connection to the face on Mars area. Oh, Sidonia. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. yeah. So um, basically, so basically, um, the, the, there seemed to be a vast chamber underneath um, that area as well, and that what was being taken from here seemed to be deposited in a uranium chamber. Up there. Oh, <laughs> so deep down under the that area of Mars appears to be uh, a city, very very deep down, where craft the size of about a thousand foot in diameter would um, actually um, um, appear. Yeah. But they need to be refueled. So as each one of these little pods around the craft has got nine uranium rods in it. So these recycled uranium rods were taken out of the supply and resupplied into the craft. Uh -huh. So there's obviously some sort of, there appears to be some sort of trading going on in dimensional terms. So the, um, so basically the other thing is um, that I thought, well, okay, um, we have a lot of people who disappear from down here. Is there some involvement up there? And indeed, I found somebody who seemed to be working up there who seem to be humanoid, and we actually mapped out their living quarters and how they survived up there deep underground in um, a sort of underground living accommodation, very much like that in Turkey where they found perhaps 20,000 people would live in oh, an right. underground city, in, yeah. in, in, which they've discovered in Turkey, and some places in Latin America as well. And uh, in order to get to work, he worked in this uranium exchange plant. He would come out to the end of his passageway from his accommodation, which interlinked with others' accommodation, and then wait for a vehicle to come along, and he would simply tell it where it wanted to go, and would take him to this area there. And there were pyramids under the ground. Um, you know, it was quite amazing, quite frankly, what was shown up. But the same technology has suddenly appeared um, in some of the Gulf states. Oh. Uh, isn't it Oman, I believe, has got an, an underground sort of taxi service that you just get a car or something or a taxi and it just takes you to where you want to go. Well, where did this technology come from? It's already in existence, you know. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, in other words, we're just, all we're doing is... Um, have a look at them. Yes, what right. Time are we? Uh, two o'clock. Oh, okay. Yes, two o'clock. So let's have a look and see what's happened. Right, so the ferrous system should point this... Um, actually seen UFOs coming along the channel in their visual and then they suddenly disappear. Well they are quite often they're seen you wouldn't see it because it's stealth, you know, so it gets under the ground and then it would appear. But um, I'm actually getting a rod pointing out to that area for um, what we call energy circle, which is these spheres that go around. So it's the code is going up the ferrous system and it's controlling the rod 
down there is a magnetic response and it's showing even though the wind is blowing here it still wants to go back to where that rod is pointing to that anomaly uh, there now let's get the craft general code out and see what that's showing the craft general code here system goes into the mind and then the mind senses the response and the rod responds to the to the actual uh, point of uh, detection. Now the ferro system is providing probably the dire system which is separate from the para system. The para, right. the para, the para being two dire. eyes, two ears, two arms, two, two legs etc. But um, the problem is the rod is picking up an energy response from an anomaly out there which is responding to uranium, the what we call space metals, um, <clears throat> and um, it also uh, picks up, um, it's probably well, it pick up 42 here as well. So um, the interesting thing about it is when I picked up 42, I was able to get them moving about on the road, and uh, we often pick them up in the Olympic Games, for instance, in the, in the media section. Uh, they're involved in things for human development really uh, <coughs> and uh, we didn't realize it was a 42 code for several years until we realized that these colors had number values and of course L. Della War he created something called the radionics box <coughs> where he had dials and numbers which was a magnetic box so basically um, the radionics box was based on the color magnetic values and the color magnetic values appeared to have been uh, brought to light by the French priest Mega, um, French priest, and then the Rosetta disc derives from that. But whereas they're basic colours, what I've done is to actually mix the colours together. So I've got blue, yellow, grey, silver, white and black together. Now if I just had blue, it would just be either pale blue for time or dark blue for water. Yellow will pick up a gas pipe. Um, silver, well white will pick up anything that we manufacture like an adding machine, a camera, it just douses on white spiritually. Um, holy water is white as well. So in black, well <laughs> all manner of things go on black which we don't really want to know. But um, the thing is that if we take the colours working like this, if you take human male it's pink and white which is 13 and 7 and a female is pink, white and silver which is 13, 7 and 12 and then what combines them is human blood which is red, white and purple which is uh, 9, 7, 1 when you add all those colours up as separate numbers so pink 13 becomes 1 plus 3 silver 12 becomes 1 plus 2 etc add them all up, male and female and human blood as single numbers they come to 42 mm. and of course if you hadn't noticed it already if you take the letters UFO out of our 26 letter alphabet and their positions and add up their positions combining, they, they add up to 42. Oh, that is, that is incredible. <laughs> so, I think that's a really good yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So this has been known for yeah. an awful long time and it goes back to the temples, the gods, the UFO transfer and everything. And the big secret we're not supposed to know is we're not alone. We have interchange traffic with humanoid forms down here, call them what you like, men are black, ladies are black, I've, I've seen men and women in black, um, keenly trying to photograph me, uh, but when I went to approach them, um, they didn't seem to want to have contact, <laughs> but the thing is that, um, you know, all roads lead to Rome, there's an expression. <laughs> Yes, indeed. So, with that, well, yes, I so think we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so thank we you have an very anomaly. much. We have an anomaly there that seems to link to Mars. There appears to be an exchange of goods going from uranium one way and two space metals coming the other way. 
which you would have to have in order to do any space technology whatsoever. And that the fact is it seems to happen for, for two hours a day, one in the morning and one in the evening or in the afternoon, and that there's a response up on Mars near the city. And by the way, when I asked 42, because don't forget all these colours are coming from 42, so you have to ask 42 what the colours are for whatever it is you're looking for. I asked them what the name of the city on Mars was and I was called Nexus. Now anybody who's looked at the dictionary for the term Nexus, it means the linking of two entities. Well, it couldn't be even any clearer than that, could it? So the entity here is linked to the entity on Mars. <laughs> now, anybody can do this if you've got the codes. That's the point, and you're willing to do it. So, although we cannot see, and our, our, our society is seeing is believing, whereas the sensory system is far more revealing. <laughs> Indeed. Right. <laughs> on that happy note, we will uh, yeah. mosey on and head off into Rye. So this is uh, Joanna Summerscales from the ET Newsroom sharing with you a very, very interesting piece of information. Make of it what you will. And I am putting together some material called The Dowsing Detectives, working with uh, all of the, uh, well, a lot of the biolocation people and they all have their different interests and skills and Peter is phenomenal at doing what he does as he says anybody can do it so anybody wants to try those colors let me know what results you get okay have a great day